one. Uh, this is the Google Analytics 4 upgrade before it's too late. Tried to make it a little urgent. Um, and uh, you know, we'll talk about a variety of things associated with that. So what are we going to go over today? Uh, sort of intro who I am, hopefully get some information about who you all are uh, so that we can kind of tailor this a little bit. Um, Google Analytics, what is it? Uh, full disclosure, I was a history major uh, coming up. So I'm really fascinated by kind of where things start to where they get to today. And I think that's actually relevant when we're talking about uh, Google Analytics. Um, do a bit of a, a little bit of a side by side between Google Analytics 4 and Universal Analytics, which is Google Analytics 3, uh, just so that we're kind of understanding some of the major differences since it is a pretty big shift. And then uh, since Google's been in the news a bit, we'll talk a little bit about GDPR and privacy concerns related to Google Analytics, because that's a little bit of a wrinkle. Um, and then we'll talk through kind of the basic steps for implementing Google Analytics 4. And then hopefully have some time for uh, any questions at the end. Um, I can talk a lot about analytics, so if folks have a lot of questions, if we want to do like a, a boff later, I'm totally up for that. All right, so who am I? I'm Stephen Pashby. I'm an account manager at Design Hammer. Uh, we're a full service web strategy design and development firm in Durham, North Carolina. We uh, work a lot in Drupal as well as WordPress and do some custom uh, JavaScript work, custom PHP work, kind of a variety of things. I've got over a decade of experience uh, working in Google Analytics um, and I oversee most of our ana analytics implementations for our clients. Uh, so who are, who are you? Um, so uh, is anyone here on the kind of developer side of the room? All right, so we've got some developers. How about uh, marketing side of the room? Some marketers, yeah, figured. Uh, business, the suits, got some suits. All right, uh, designers, no designers. All right, well, fair enough. Oh, one, I guess. Uh, so um, how about uh, anyone in a uh, freelance capacity? A few freelancers, cool. Uh, agency? Some agencies and in-house. No in-house, all right. Oh, oh in-house, sort of, uh, fair enough. I mean, it's, it's not an exclusive category, so you know, whatever you wanna be is cool. Um, and uh, if everyone would give me kind of a show of fingers of your comfort level with Google Analytics and experience with Google Analytics, one being not a lot and five being a pro, you're here to show me why I'm wrong. All right. <laughs> three and a quarter. That's okay. Three so, and a knuckle. Depends on how recently they changed the dashboard. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. All right. Uh, so it sounds like mostly we're kind of in that two to four range. That's, that's a great place to be. With the five, Amanda, there's at least one five here in the green shirt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so what are we going to cover? So just what is Google Analytics anyway? Um, what are the differences between Universal Analytics, Google Analytics 3, and Google Analytics 4? And then what about privacy and GDPR and Google Analytics 4 specifically? And how and when to upgrade to Google Analytics 4? So, Google Analytics, what is it? Uh, highest level, it is a free analytics service offered by Google. Um, you know, it's implemented at, in some way or another by adding some JavaScript to the pages of their website. Page loads, JavaScript runs, stuff is tracked. Um, it was originally developed uh, from Urchin on Demand, which was a uh, you know turn of the last century <laughs> uh, analytics service, but very popular. Uh, the original Google service was released in 2005, and there were subsequent major releases in 2009, uh, 2012, and 2020, which is Google Analytics 4. Um, if you look at um, W3 Techs, kind of seeing who all is using Google Analytics. Of, of websites that their, their tool can identify, uh, almost 86% of websites are using some form of Google Analytics. So it is huge. Now, you know, it's a little bit of a caveat, so sometimes they can't identify stuff. It's closer to like six, mid 60s of all websites I think they analyzed, but still, it's, a, you know, it's the big player, right? And that kind of makes sense. I mean, it's free. It's pretty powerful. Pretty easy to implement. So universal analytics, Google Analytics 3. 
Um, this has been the main version, kind of the, the go-to production ready version. Almost all the stuff that you look at online about how to do things in Google Analytics talks about universal analytics. Um, initially released in October 2012, so it has been around for a while. Um, at its top, kind of the highest level, it's still really a refinement of the base urchin on demand technology. Um, so they've added universal analytics added support for cross platform tracking, app and website tracking, uh, custom dimensions and metrics. So it's sort, but it's really kind of an incremental improvement of the same basic model. Uh, so it still really uh, keeps the kind of the base decade old model of page views, hits, and browser cookie of tra tracking of users. Um, and uh, Historic data is largely compatible with previous versions. So if you were using, you know, the asynchronous uh, property previously, it wasn't a big leap to go to universal analytics, right? It's kind of, again, same model, pretty easy to think about going forward. Google Analytics 4, going to be a bit of a different story. So initially released in October 2020 um, to uh, the point where we were talking just the beginning, a lot of folks uh, said, hey, Google, this is not ready for prime time. It doesn't do a lot of the stuff that we expect to be able to do with universal analytics. So that's all great. Uh, it has an entirely new model for tracking and analysis, but the new model is incompatible with, with universal analytics or uh, earlier models. So there's no um, method to transfer your historic data from universal analytics to Google Analytics 4. And you can't even make an exact one-to-one -one comparison between data between Universal Analytics and Google Analytics 4. It's just a different model. It tracks things differently, has different underlying assumptions. Um, so you know, we really are at kind of a, a kind of a crossroads point here where you're going to have to move because in March, Google announced that Universal Analytics would no longer track new data after July 2023. So we've got about a year, a little less, uh, until Universal Analytics becomes basically just a place to review your historic data. And Google has only committed to support Universal Analytics data through December of 2023. So after that, maybe they'll extend it, but who knows? So you know, I think one of the things that I think is the most important thing to take away from this is if you're using Universal Analytics, now is the time to kind of get a different plan in place, whether it's Google Analytics 4 or another analytics package. Mm -hmm. You want to make that decision now so when Universal Analytics goes away, you actually have historic data in whatever platform you're going to use going forward so you can make good decisions. That's kind of a big takeaway. Don't take away anything else. Make a plan like this month. Um, so Google Analytics still has a lot of benefits, right? It's a free, it's a free platform. It has a really robust feature set. Um, and it, I think in many ways, it's the industry standard for small, medium-sized organizations. One of the interesting things was Google had, well, it was Google Analytics 360, that was kind of their enterprise offering that you actually pay for. They actually rolled that into Google Analytics 4, so it's going away as well. Uh, so Google Analytics 4 is kind of, at least for now, the platform from Google. Um, basically, since almost everyone uses it, you can find so much information about how to use it, how to do different things, you know, different patterns that you should follow, lots of different stuff. So big advantage for using Google Analytics from sort of community support. Um, and then if you use other Google products, like Google Tag Manager, Google Ads, Google Search Console, Google Data Studio, YouTube, it has a really robust integration with many, many Google products. So if you're in the Google ecosystem, great. Google makes it easier to stay there. The concerns. Um, data privacy and ownership. Uh, I, my boss always says, if you're not the customer, you are the product. So um, you know, there is no fee for Google Analytics. So Google is getting something out of you using their very robust platform. You know, they definitely, uh, a lot of man hours have been poured into this platform. 
A lot of resources are poured into this platform. So they are getting some benefit. And then another big concern is if uh, GDPR is relevant to you or your clients, there are some big considerations there. We'll talk about that in a little more detail. So let's talk about Google Analytics 4 versus Universal Analytics. So at a high level, Universal Analytics has kind of a core model of page views and then uses the Google Analytics cookie as well as some third party cookies and can be extended with custom events. Um, if you want to track, it can track app uh, uh, usage, but you have to have a separate property for that between apps and websites. Um, it comes with approximately 80 predefined reports, um, though a lot of those uh, <laughs> are more deprecated or no longer provide useful information due to changes to Google. They just haven't taken the reports out. Um, and it has four types of predefined goals uh, that you can use for conversion tracking. Google Analytics 4 is 100% event-based, uh, has a lot more flexibility than Universal Analytics. Um, it allows you to collect app and website data in a single property using multiple data streams. Multiple websites can go to a single property. Uh, it's got um, kind of a secret sauce, but ostensibly better uh, ability to track users across devices. It's kind of neat, if a little creepy. Um, and, uh, but has kind of a small number of predefined reports, like less than 20. Uh, and the real big focus uh, from a reporting perspective is not giving you, you know, 80, maybe it's in closer to 100 reports these days in Universal Analytics that you have to kind of sort through, but rather giving you a pretty easy custom reporting interface that you can kind of customize your reports to your own particular needs. Um, and goals are identified as specific event conversions, which is sort of important. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So I want to, yeah. Are there default events that would replace like the classic visit? Yeah, yeah, uh, so there are. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit in detail, but yes, there are default events. Um, frankly, the event uh, loadout by default in Google Analytics 4 is pretty useful. Um, you know, if you're using custom events uh, for a lot of stuff uh, in Universal Analytics, you're not going to have to do a lot of that by default because a bunch of the things that, you know, I always set up for my clients are like, yeah, that just comes out of the box. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit in more detail on kind of the that model and sort of uh, kind of the key metrics I associate with Universal Analytics versus um, Google Analytics 4. We'll talk in more detail about events, uh, and then we'll talk in a bit more detail about conversions. Because I think those are like mental model things, the most important things to talk about. So the core model in Universal Analytics is, again, page views, Google Analytics cookie, and then third-party cookies for like referral information, ad retargeting, stuff like that. Um, session information is derived from hits, page views and the Google Analytics cookie. So it figures out, okay, session started because we got a hit from this user first time, and then at some point this user stops interacting with the website, then our session is over and we have a time. Um, leverage third-party cookies for display advertising features, uh, and you can definitely extend it with custom events, and those are really hits with a defined structure of additional metadata. Um, Google Analytics 4, again, 100% event-based. Um, there's a larger selection of user interactions tracked out of the box. Um, so, for example, uh, what I always think of is um, Universal Analytics, by default, does not track file downloads. So if you have you know, a bunch of PDFs on your site and you want to know how much, which of those are being downloaded, well, you could go to your server logs, but that's kind of a pain. Um, but you know, that's a thing where you'd have to configure a custom event and it's a little bit of a hacky custom event, honestly, because it is, what you're doing is you're looking for clicks on links that have a file extension in the, in the URL, right? So it's, it's a bunch of steps. It's a little hacky. But out of the box, file downloads tracked by Google Analytics 4. Now, under the hood, they're probably doing the same thing, but at least you don't have to, you know, muck around with the particular regex to get the, the right file extensions and stuff like that. So it's kind of nice. Um, so 
Google Analytics 4 is also moving towards cookie list tracking. Uh, so they're using, no longer using third party cookies for anything associated with GA4. Um, still using a first party cookie, but the, at least Google says the model will support cookie list tracking when that becomes a thing. Um, so how does Google get all of the kind of data stew that Google wants? Well, machine learning and other, you know, secret sauce things. So again, you know, maybe that's comforting, maybe it's not, but uh, specifically third party cookies are gone and it looks like Google Analytics 4, when cookie list tracking is required, will be in a position to do that. Um, yeah? Sorry, uh, who, which party is which? Uh, first party uh, is Google Analytics, uh, third party is anyone else. Okay. So, I mean, website, your own first party website cookies are separate from this discussion. Um, so, uh, more event flexibility. Uh, because Google Analytics 4 had a very rigid, or Google Analytics had a very rigid uh, event structure, very free form uh, for events. So you can kind of make them do what you need them to do rather than sort of fitting the data that you needed to capture into custom events in universal analytics. So again, I, like I said, history major. So a lot of it for me comes back to like, what are some of the key metrics and what does that tell us about the platform? So we'll look at key metrics in universal analytics. Uh, what are the big ones people talk about? I want a lower bounce rate. I want more page views. I want more pages per session, right? And like you look at all the reports, all the reports are lined up to you know, show you these particular metrics. This is core to the entire kind of worldview of universal analytics. So bounce rate. Percentage of visitors to a particular website who navigate away from the site after viewing only one page. Well, that's bad, right? Maybe, right? Um, if you, uh, you have a resource, someone goes to the site from search, they find that resource immediately. Cool, your site has succeeded. They don't need to search through the site for the resource because they found it, right? Yeah, if you're a nonprofit, you're trying to give this particular resource away, cool, you have succeeded, even though you have a 100% bounce rate on this page, right? Um, pages per session, average number of pages a user views in a single session, right? Higher is better, right? Again, maybe, um, maybe not though, right? Because if you have a lot, a very high number of page views per session, then you might have users who are confused or spending a lot of time looking through the site and can't find what they're looking for. Uh, average session duration, same thing, right? Longer is not necessarily better. And it's tracked based off of generally by default page views, right? So if I land, if I t go to one page, right? But it's a very long page. I'm very interested in what's there. And I read that entire, you know, 5,000 word article but I don't click another page after that, my average session duration is gonna be really low because there's not that extra page view to capture that time I spent on that page. All right, so again, maybe these are important. But if you think about where analytic, universal analytics came from, and you think about what the internet was like and how it was monetized when Urchin was out there and in the earlier versions, what are we trying to do? We're trying to get ad impressions for our website because we're trying to sell our ad space, right? And that's still the case for, you know, news organizations and stuff like that, but it's not the case for a lot of other organizations. A lot of other organizations are not trying to sell ads on their website. So these metrics are not necessarily very relevant to a lot of other organizations. Um, and a, a lot of times under universal analytics, folks would augment these with custom events that are you know, more relevant to that particular company or organization. Uh, but you know, I think it's helpful to remember, all of these, they are old assumptions, right? They are really key, you know, tied to 20 years ago. And you know, just think how different you know, the world and the internet is today versus 20 years ago, it's huge, right? 
So key metrics in Google Analytics 4. And again, you'll see a huge shift here. Engage sessions. So according to Google, an engaged session metric is count of sessions that lasted longer than 10 seconds and it, or had a conversion event or had two or more screen or page views. So now we capture a lot more useful things, right? So someone has spent a little bit of time. Someone has... Um, looked at as like like landed on the site and done a web form submission. Boom. Done. Downloaded a file. Done. That's an engaged session. You know, and again, those would have been, depending on how your form was configured, a bounce under universal analytics without other tracking mixed in there. And you know, two or more screen or page views, it does indicate engagement. Um, average engagement time per session. Google says this is the user engagement dur uh, per set duration per session. So in other words, the amount of time a user is actively engaging with the page. Scrolling, also tracked out of the box by Google Analytics 4. So you know, that, think of that long page, those scrolls, track. So we're seeing engagement there. Um, and also, is the page in the primary window being viewed on the screen? Right. That's another pretty huge thing, right? it's just sitting over in a, in a tab, not so useful. But uh, you know, in, if it's the primary window, well, they're probably engaged with it, right? Uh, engagement rate, so the ratio of engaged sessions relative to total sessions. So you know, that, that gives you more, probably a more relevant, more versatile way of looking at uh, how how you know, engaged someone is with your website, as opposed to just the number of page views or whether they bounced. Um, and if you think about it, since everything's an event, and the more flexible events, very likely, since events are more kind of front and center than in Universal Analytics, you'll end up using more events. Right? And if you're using more events, then those are other events that are getting captured in these engagement stats. So again, it kind of, I think, you know, in thinking of that as event-based, it's funneling everything towards events. Uh, so I think that's a, that's a, pretty, a pretty savvy way of changing things. So if you're going to change something, I think this is much more flexible and probably useful. Um, events, let's talk about those just briefly. So in Universal Analytics, you could configure events. There are a bunch of different ways to do that. Uh, if you're using um, you know, the Google, Google Analytics module in Drupal, uh, it has some events built out of the box. You can do others through the module. Um, you could you know, do it yourself in JavaScript. Uh, if you're using Google Tag Manager, very easy, straightforward workflow to configure your events uh, with tags in Google Tag Manager. But events have a, a set structure, an event category, event action, event label, and event value. And then you can you know, kind of slice and dice your data coming over. That's cool. Um, but you know, event value, what, what does that mean? You know, is my event, is this a one? Is this a two? You know, it's, um, it's a structure that you can use. But uh, I find that particularly if you've been using sort of out of the box uh, Google Analytics, like the module for Drupal, or a plugin for WordPress that adds custom events, they have some default configurations for like event category, event action, that are kind of useless. And like they just, they don't give you information. And if you've already got your historic data in that format, now, hey, you've got, you need, if you want, all of your data to be kind of in the same format so you can actually like review across different types of events, you've got to match that format. You actually lose some stuff. So, you know, it looks nice. There's some useful things for it, but it can also kind of end up down a, a long road that isn't super useful. So events in Google Analytics 4 got a wide range of included and easily added events. Um, file download, scroll, video start, video progress, um, and then you can configure additional custom events and all of the parameters are flexible. So you can have events with five parameters, with one parameter. 
So it requires a little bit of thought, but you've got a lot more flexibility than you had under universal analytics. Um, additionally, Google provides a, a large library of recommended events, which are you know, effectively, here's a structure for this common web interaction that is in keeping with the other built-in events to, again, make it easier for you to keep things consistent, make your data useful between the uh, built-in events and any sort of custom events you, Im you implement. Um, you know, because again, in Universal Analytics, we had our page views and stuff, and then we had, over here we had our events. And they're not really the same. Whereas in Google Analytics 4, events, 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 it's all an event. Page views are an event in Google Analytics 4. Um, so, you know, it's maybe a bit more work up front uh, for something that is outside of the recipes Google provides for recommended events. But there are a pretty fair number of resources, and once you kind of get in that event space, it's pretty reasonable. So goal goals and conversions in universal analytics. So um, in universal, universal analytics, each property, or each view technically, could have uh, your own um, goals configured, which would allow you to track conversions. Did this website convert? And universal analytics supported four types of goals. Destination, which is this specific page loaded, and that allowed you also, with that specific type of goal, to establish a expected funnel path to get to that page. Uh, duration, session lasted a certain amount of time or longer. Pages or screens per session, you know, anyone that was more than two pages per session. Or event, a specific event triggered. Right, those are the four things that were supported under Universal Analytics. And as you can see, two of those are, you know, lining up with those kind of key metrics, right? Just almost one for one. And then another one has the assumption that you're going to go through a specific sales funnel, right? That's what that destination really is about, that kind of specific sales funnel. And we know that now we tend not to prefer as much of an on-rails experience as web users. So maybe that's a little bit of an old school way of looking at things too. Goals and conversions in Google Analytics 4. Conversions directly replace goals. So there's not a goal anymore, it's just conversions. Um, specific events can be marked as conversions. So this event, it's a conversion. On the other hand, there's no current mechanism for that sort of funnel tracking. So that is, I think, one of those places where people say, well, this isn't ready for prime time. I think it's one of those things that Google says, hey, this is a free tool. Um, too bad. We think this is better. So uh, that's kind of an overview, Universal Analytics, Google Analytics 4. So let's talk privacy considerations. So GDPR, what is that? So it's a uh, EU law um, that governs data protection and privacy. Um, it's pretty complicated, but at the highest level, uh, it protects the personal data, including name, location, IP address, cooking information, and much more, um, of EU citizens and EU businesses. Um, it provides EU citizens a lot of rights related to this, um, which I was uh, talking with uh, some developers the other day, I was like, you know, a lot of this stuff, it's great, on paper, it doesn't actually think about how the internet works very well. So there's a little bit of friction there. <laughs> you know, if, the, if, they, if these rights were enumerated you know, 25 years ago, the internet would have been built in a different way. But it's not. So a little bit of friction. But basically, a lot of different rights, right to access, rectification, erasure, restriction of processing, portability, right to object, uh, and then rights about automated decision making and profiling of your specific data. Right? I mean, that's <laughs> that's a lot, right? You know, just you know, just to think about that, like anyone in the EU should say, "Hey, I want you to just remove all my data from you know your analytics." Like, how would you do that? Yeah kind of neat. So, um, a little bit of can of worms. 
Um, so GDPR applies to any organization operating in the EU as well as those outside the EU that offer goods or services to users in the EU. Um, doesn't only require to the website, but also any services that the website uses that collect any user information, including Google Analytics. Um, I'm not going to answer whether GDPR applies to you. Talk to your lawyer. <laughs> All right, so universal analytics privacy protection. So there's a lot of privacy, at least from a, um, a website owner, in universal anal analytics. So personally identifiable information, like names and IP addresses, are not provided to website owners. Um, and it's also a violation of terms of service if you were to pass that to um, universal analytics via custom events or some other mechanism. Um, however, universal analytics does track or does collect IP addresses and data from third party cookies uh, used to measure the effectiveness of advertising and improve the effectiveness of Google products. Uh, so, um, and also this is stored on Google servers located in the US. Um, in the first half of this year, France, Italy, Austria, and Denmark are, are the enforcement agencies related to GDPR for those countries, determined that universal analytics does not comply with GDPR. Um, so websites that are subject to GDPR should cease using universal analytics. Again, consult your legal counsel if that's you or your clients. Um, the core concern is there are insufficient protections to prevent the US government from spying on data on Google servers, um, you know, not, not political, it's just like that's what they say, insufficient protections there. So uh, the user is not able to uh, consent with the US government to allow the US government to potentially, you know, use a FISA warrant or whatever to get their info from a Google server. So since that can't happen, according to the enforcement agencies, universal analytics, right out. Um, but uh, as of last month, there have been no economic sanctions issued for the use of universal analytics. But, you know, who knows? I mean, again, 86% of websites? Seems like there'd be a lot of enforcement opportunities there. Um, Google Analytics 4 has several improvements for privacy. Um, so while Google Analytics 4 uses IPs to determine where users' data is stored, data can be stored without IPs on um, e EU servers, which would not be subject to, for example, the CIA knocking on the door of the data center and saying, hey, we need to see what's on that server. Um, also offers country level controls uh, and customizations, which allow you to kind of minimize the data that's collected based off IP. Um, EU and the country level enforcement agencies have not made official decisions regarding GA4. Um, many commentators, not um, surprisingly, who also sell competing analytics products, um, feel that GA4 does not meet GDPR compliance. Uh, so they're like, yeah, you gotta, gotta move to another platform and hey, we sell one. Um, in an attempt to address these concerns, the e US and the EU actually have announced a new framework for transatlantic data flow with uh, improved uh, protection of data. So formal language hasn't been finalized. Um, who knows how long that's gonna be? Uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world. Um, and it's too early to determine whether the framework will be deemed adequate by the EU enforcement agencies or the EU privacy NGOs that like to sue in EU courts to say that this isn't adequate. So, you know, more to come on that. But maybe GA4 will be fine? Maybe not? Don't know. So there are a few alternatives I'll just kind of put out there for you. Um, uh, I was just looking recently for a client who is subject to GDPR and they wanted to look to move away from Google Analytics. And these were four that looked to have kind of similar 
um, similarly robust uh, custom event tracking capabilities. Um, they, they are generally in the kind of older page view bounce rate model, uh, which is a little bit of a bummer. Uh, they all generally have a monthly or yearly fee, but it's based on usage. And to kind of turn that around, um, in this case, you are the customer, right? You are paying, you own your data, you can delete your data, and so you actually have more control over the data. So, and you know, for, for most small and medium-sized organizations, the, the cost is pretty reasonable. It's not crazy Google, uh, Google Analytics 360 money. Um, the other kind of caveat is that stuff's not as full-featured. Uh, doesn't integrate as tightly with Google Analytics, uh, Google products. So, you know, a little bit less easy to use. You're probably going to need a developer to do some JavaScript for some of the platforms. All right, uh, so implementing Google Analytics 4. And we'll go a little bit fast, but so should you implement Google Analytics 4? Because I haven't really told you whether you should or not. That depends. Are you currently using Universal Analytics? Well, at the very least, you need to get off of that as quickly as you can. Um, or get something else in place in parallel so you build up some historic data in that other platform. Um, are you using other Google products? But that's a vote for maybe going to Google Analytics 4. Is your organization subject to GDPR? Well, you, then you need to get off of Universal Analytics like very fast, and maybe you go to Google Analytics 4, roll the dice, or maybe you go to a different platform. <laughs> when should you implement Google Analytics 4, if you're going to? Um, if, like, are you currently reviewing, doing like regular reviews of Google Analytics or Universal Analytics? Does this review in include historic data, right? If it does, then you need to implement Google Analytics 4 soon so that you build up historic data in Google Analytics 4 so at some point you can cut over. Um, but right now you're not going to be able to do that. Um, do you have custom events implemented in current Universal Analytics property? Well then you want to keep track of those and get those over into Google Analytics 4 so they're being tracked. Um, are you using Google Data Studio dashboards, consuming Universal Analytics? Can consume Google Analytics 4, but you're going to have to update all of your reports. Um, are you undertaking a significant website redesign in the next three to six months? It's good to actually do Google Analytics 4 beforehand, so again, you're establishing that benchmark data. Don't wait six months and then be at a place where you have to re-implement Universal Analytics to maintain current tracking, and then Google Analytics 4 to get past that. How should you implement Google Analytics 4? How is your Universal Analytics implemented, right? And then who is responsible for maintaining or updating your analytics? What's their technical comfort level? So, Google Analytics 4 implementation, four basic steps. Create a Google Analytics 4 property, it's super easy uh, in Google Analytics. You either use the GA4 setup assistant in the admin view for your existing Universal Analytics property, or you hit the Create Property CTA, which will default to a Google Analytics 4 property. Enter the appropriate name, fill out the organizational details. Um, since the properties uh, support multiple data sources, you'll have to set up a data source. It will guide you to that immediately following. You enter the, you know, assume, I'm going to assume web, you select web, your domain, and the display name for the stream. Uh, you, at that time, you can adjust the events that are provided automatically, but probably just want to leave that as a default because it's useful stuff. Once the stream's configured, you get a stream ID. It's G dot whatever, and you can access your tracking codes. Pretty easy. Filtering internal traffic, if that's a thing that you do currently, it's done a bit differently in GA4. Um, rather than have a separate filtered profile, or a filtered view, right? You've got just a single view for uh, Google Analytics 4. And so what uh, they allow is um, basically creating filters that can be used as segments. Um, so you basically set that up on the data stream level, uh, set up your IP rules as you would, and then you can turn those on or off or set them to testing. Testing tracks the data, but allows you to uh, segment it out in your reports uh, turning the filter on does not capture the data. Turning the filter off captures the data without tagging it. And so it basically creates an automatic segment, which is pretty cool. So how do you add it to the website? So there are a few different ways, particularly in Drupal, you've got some good options. Um, one, you could just 
copy and paste your site tag into the theme. That's easy. Uh, two, you could use a Google Analytics module, um, which can be configured with the appropriate data stream ID. It supports GA4. Um, one nice thing about the Google Analytics module is you can then set it to only um, uh, uh, fire that code for particular user roles or particular pages. So, you know, don't have your admin users junking up your Google Analytics. Um, you can also use Google Tag Manager. I think that's really nice because I do a lot of stuff in Tag Manager. Uh, you can either just drop the container into the theme or use the Google Tag Manager mod module for Drupal. Big takeaway is whichever one you do, make sure you account for only desired pages or user roles. Right? Again, you don't want to have a lot of admin page views junking up your, uh, your, your data. Um, last step, configure events, reports, and conversions. So events will need to be implemented at somewhat level in JavaScript, either directly in code, via Google Tag Manager, which again, it's the same sort of very streamlined experience, you just use a different tag than a universal analytics tag, or via appropriate Drupal module, and you know they support it to the degree the module does. Um, reports can be figured, configured either in GA4 or on an alternative analysis platform. Um, Google uh, Data Studio is very popular, it's prettier. Um, I would recommend either leaning into one or the other not to focus on trying to do both. Um, and then conversion uh, events need to be implemented before they've been identified in GA4, so it's a matter of like, hey, this event, this is a conversion. And there are two ways to do that. One is you configure the conversions, type in your conversion event name, it needs to be exact, case sensitive, all that stuff. Um, or you can go to the events under configure and toggle events to be conversions. Uh, so. Next steps, once you're done, you're ready to track data in GA4. Um, if you've implemented GA4 in parallel with Universal Anal Analytics, I recommend thinking three to six months of letting the GA4 run before you start using that primarily as your analysis tool. Um, but it depends on what your review cycle is. Um, and once you've got that sufficient historical data in GA4, you can sunset Universal Analytics, hopefully before July 1, 2023. So, big improvement. Uh, if you want to move to use GA4, or if you want to use Google Analytics, you should move to GA4 ASAP. If you have GDPR requirements, stay tuned. Uh, questions? Yeah. Hello. Hi. We have a lot of sites that use the Google Analytics module, mm -hmm. and recently everybody's been creating the GTAG. Mm -hmm. Sister account with the UA. Yeah. So now you have both yeah. in the module. I know it's going to sunset. But say you have somebody who's completely ignorant of analytics and everything else, mm -hmm. and they come to the site and they're seeing both. What's going to happen to that UA um, if you just leave it there and you don't do anything? Uh, so basically, um, the question is uh, for the recording um, in, in uh, the G module supports having both a UA and a GA. Or a UA and a G tag in there. Uh, what's going to happen uh, once UA goes away, um, Universal Analytics goes away, if you don't take it out, right? Yeah. Uh, so basically, July 1, 2023, uh, UA properties are not going to track any more data. Uh, so there's probably some minor uh, economy on load times to take that UA out so you don't have the uh, the particular tracking code, the particular JavaScript associated with that UA being added to the pages. But it's not going to mess up any of the Google Analytics 4 data. Tracking codes are entirely separate. They're not going to cross-pollinate or anything like that. So it's not a, a big deal to leave it in there. But if you wanted to just you know dot all your I's and cross all your T's, after July 1, you'd take it out. Yeah? Do you know how long the, the uh, data will be available for like logging into the dashboard, looking at it on UA, like once that gets implemented? So what Google has said is six months after they stop tracking. Uh, at least, at least six months. So I think that will maybe depend on how quickly they see adoption, um, or maybe it won't. But uh, I, so I'm, I'm planning not to have access to stuff past December of 2023. So, and the, so the data that's been collected for the last 15 years, 
Mm -hmm. uh, you can export it and then find your own tool to not analyze it. <laughs> I mean, again, uh, you know, it's, um, I, I totally get you. But at the same time, it's like, you know, it's, uh, it's a free service and, you know, we are ultimately the product, not the customer. Yeah. Now you talked about events, and from a design perspective, say you picked it up for a website to change the homepage layout to go from something that was all above the fold, uh -huh. just what you see without scrolling at all, and maybe you want to uh, build a site that is going to have a very long mm -hmm. homepage that people are going to be required to scroll. Mm -hmm. Now, with these events, you would be able to say track how much scrolling is yeah. done on that homepage yeah. by visits or by uh, sessions? Uh, you've got, uh, so there's a scroll event uh, that basically tracks depth on the home page. Uh, and so you could basically set conversions for a particular depth and say, okay, if folks got down this far, we count that as a conversion. Okay. And then for a similar sort of event, like uh, if you have a photo gallery, mm -hmm. let's say when you go left or right, or you yeah. gallery, yeah, you'd have, have yeah, you could totally set up, uh, you'd have to basically set up an on-click event for the navigation. Um, but, you know, you could use like, um, you know, whatever appropriate element or tag is in the, in the HTML and just set that up in the event. Probably be easiest to do that in um, Google Tag Manager. Okay. Yeah, what probably last question. Go ahead. What version of the Google Analytics module is accounting for GA4? Uh, so that's been built in for a while. I believe that it has. Uh, full disclosure, we don't tend to use that one. We tend to use Tag Manager, um, which has sort of a, a weird bug that I don't quite understand right now, so you have to apply a patch, it's the whole thing. Um, but it's on the front page of the module, so it's, okay. it's, it, it's, it's front and center. Um, I, I'm pretty sure, I mean, I know the eight and nine versions do. I think I saw seven. For GA, mod GA module had that, but I think that's like maybe the last thing that's going to be done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, um, like I said, uh, we are now three minutes over time, but I, I hope you all uh, got some good information. Um, if folks want to do like a boff later, I'm totally up for it. If not, I will just go to sessions, and that's cool with me too. Well, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.